everybody, welcome back. It's me, Rosalie. Welcome to the Ultimate World Music Reaction Channel. If you guys liked that song that I was playing during the introduction, it is called Hollow by Reap the Light. Check it out. The link is directly in the description below and pinned to the comments. Make sure to go check that channel out. Today's video is sponsored by the band Reap the Light. Special shout out today goes to Gary Hickman for supporting this channel. Check out that song, Hollow. Beautiful vocals, beautiful piano composition with it. And I think a lot of you Nightwish, symphonic metal fans are gonna appreciate it. So check it out and uh, let's dive in. Today, I've got something special for you. I'm really happy that you're here. I have been exploring Nightwish and I'm still on the journey exploring all their different songs, trying to go in order and just learn about the band, get to know them, the different songs they've done. But all the songs I've reacted to so far have been Nightwish featuring their current lead singer, Floor Janssen. And side note, we are so happy that she's doing well. Her posts have been sharing her health journey and how she is cancer free and doing well and has already been able to go back on tour. So I'm so happy to hear that. But today I wanna to check out something a little further back, which which is Nightwish Wishmaster with Tarja Turunen. Now Tarja, Tarja, she was uh, the lead singer with Nightwish way back when, and we're going to learn more about her and about what happened. But Tarja Turunen, her official name is Tarja Soile Susanna Turunen Kabuli, <laughs> lots of words, um, but she's professionally known as Tarja Turunen or simply Tarja, Tarja. She is a Finnish heavy metal singer and she was mostly known for singing with Nightwish, even though she has her own work and her own projects she created. But uh, she was born in a small village in Kite in Finland, and, um and in December of 96, her former classmate, Tuomas Holopainen, we know him from Nightwish, he invited her to join this acoustic mood music project they were working on. And he discovered her pipes <laughs> and how she can sing, um, how she has this operatic voice. And I have never listened to her before. In the comments, some of you would let me know how you guys love and appreciate Flo Janssen, but there's something special about Taria. And I understand that. Those of you who have been part of the Nightwish club, if you will, the Nightwish army, from the get-go, whenever there is a change in band members, there is a certain emotional connection you may have to previous singers, previous band members, and that's understandable. I think the further back, the longer we are part of something, the more there is an emotional connection, and it takes time to get used to the new, to open your heart to something different, and uh, so I know there's many of you out who, who Many of you out there who are big Flor Janssen fans, many of you who appreciate Tarja, those of you who may even prefer her vocals, everybody has a different opinion. But I want to really explore Nightwish in all its beautiful facets, and that includes some of the other lead singers. So today I want to check that out. She joined Nightwish, again, joined this uh, project with Tuomas in 96, and um, then they started working together. And unfortunately, 2005, I believe, was the breakup where there were some changes in the band on the basis, Sammy had been fired, they weren't able to work together anymore. And so in the following years, that relationship between Tuomas and Turunen's husband, Tarja's husband and manager, Marcelo Cabuli, had that deteriorated, things started changing. So Tarja announced her, um, her break from the band. And I know that came with a whole host of emotions. We'll talk about that when we start diving into some of the other songs. But today I wanna to check out Nightwish just to get a feel for Tarja's vocals. Um, now I'm pronouncing it Tarja. Some of you may say Tarja, Tarja Turunen, um, but Finnish heavy metal singer. And I'm excited to check this out just because I've been loving and exploring uh, Flora's vocals, but it's cool to also see everything else that this band has to offer. So let us dive straight in without further ado. Again, check out the links below. Go support this band, Reap the Light. Check out that song, Hollow. And um, yeah, subscribe to this channel. Here we go. Nightwish, Wishmaster. Now I feel like I sound like Floor when she's introducing the songs at some of the Wacken concerts. It's time. Okay, maybe I'm not saying it quite the way that she is. <laughs> I tried. Here we go. Those hair, man. That, that, that long mane. Okay. Oh, here we, here we 
on fire. Guitar solos are out of this world. So, um, didn't pause during the event because <laughs> the event, <laughs> the ride, um, but here are my thoughts. So impressive vocals, impressive how she can, um, she definitely has that very operatic voice. Um, I believe that if I see correctly, um, she has a three and a half octave range, soprano, and obviously that operatic voice. To me, her voice, and this is just me subjective perception, her voice sounds a little thinner not thinner and weaker, okay? Don't misunderstand me, but thinner uh, than what I'm used to from Flora. Flora, from Flora, <laughs> from Flora Janssen. With Flora, you can hear, she has that operatic voice too. She can hit those high notes, but Flora's voice to me, again, subjective perception, has a little more of that warmer, richer, fuller sound where Taria's uh, voice, um, also powerful, able to hit high notes, just very operatic, is a little thinner to me. And um, I feel for for Taria's voice though I don't know much about opera at all it's to me a very typically operatic voice like if I think opera I would think Taria just that thin clear high clean opera voice with Flor she can sing so operatic but now that I've listened to some other things that Flor does um, I also know she does some of that pop rock, right? And that's where other aspects of her voice come in very handy, where she can do the operatic, but she can also do the pop, the rock. And there's just a little more of that fuller, warmer sound to me. But that's only based off of one song, okay? That's subjective perception. Keep in mind, the observer always influences the observation, no matter how much we try to be objective. 
and this is based off of one song I've seen from Taria. So I'm excited to to even hear more of of her work and see what she does. But that was my first thought. The lyrics. Um. Oh, and also it was cool to see how she's <laughs> hitting these crazy high notes and just da 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 da. I'm not an opera singer, so forget about it. But uh, and then she's still just kind of dancing around. But the way she was moving and grooving it looked so casual it was almost it was impressive to me to be like she's hitting those high notes with such force singing this opera where I would if I think opera I would imagine the very stoic composed because you know you got to really be very technically perfect and she's doing this technically perfect but still just kind of you know grooving it's like you know I'm just creating art over here no problem I just very very cool um very cool, beautiful lady, uh, very powerful vocals and the guitar solos. For this song, naturally, because I'm a singer-songwriter and I'm into psychology, philosophy, my draw will always be vocals a lot of times and the lyrics, though I try to also pay attention to what else is happening in the song. But I have to sometimes really work hard to listen in on other details because naturally my focus will gravitate towards the voice just as much as if a, a professional keyboard player or... Um, P pianist or I don't know saxophone player listens to tracks they're naturally po possibly um, unless they're like super talented multi-instrumentalists and musicians sometimes there's this natural draw to listen to something specific based on what you do what you're what you know um sometimes I have to really pay attention to those things in more detail to hear other elements that I may miss but here one of the things I really loved in addition to the voice which was easy to pick up on this time was the guitar. I mean, these guitar solos were just epic. Um, very impressive how Tuomas, cool to see him in such an old video, it looks much younger. Um, Zim on the keyboard, you know, sweating, just going at it, just crazy talent. Um, the the guitar solos were crazy awesome though. And then the lyrics, very poetic, again, something I'm learning about a lot of the songs that Nightwish does, very playful fairy tale like um master apprentice heartborn seventh seeker warrior disciple in me the wish master and then it goes on a dream-eyed child staring into the night on a journey to storyteller's mind whispers a wish speaks with the stars the words are silent in him distant sighs from a lonely heart i will be with you soon my shalafi gray heavens my destiny um, Sla Mori, the one who, who, the one known only by him to August Rams, the sorcery within, if you hear the call of arcane lore, your world shall rest on earth no more. A maiden elf calling with her cunning song, meet me at the end of la last home. Heartborn will find the way. Okay, so first glance, very poetic, fairy tale, magical. It reminds me of some of the other songs I've reacted to from The Night Witch, which you can find in my Finland playlist. Um, yeah, just very magical, dreamy, now kind of like story time, ever dream. But here um, in some of the resources that I'm using, for example, songmeanings.com, different people are celebrating on, different people are elaborating on what it means. And um, some people are talking about it having references to Lord of the Rings and Dragonlance. While I don't know Dragonlance, I do know Lord of the Rings and I could see that, right? The master, disciple, the different characters in the song have being a reference to different people in the these movies and these sagas and legends or different realms for example middle earth um others are saying the song refers to concepts from the silmarillion the history of middle earth uh as one person says i think it's about the journey probably to the gray heavens the undying lands where elves go um then someone else said tuomas tuomas said about this song this is my personal tribute to fantasy especially the closest to me to Tolkien and Dragonlance. These worlds have become a sort of inverted reality for me where the story of the Kinslayer can't become reality. Moreover, I don't believe in this thing called destiny. We are the masters of our own wishes, beliefs, and dreams. Whatever you desire enough, it can happen. Destiny is an excuse for those who don't have the strength to fulfill their wi wishes. Everything is possible, even the impossible. Interesting. So different people commenting on what the references might be about, where this might be coming from. I too definitely see this idea of the magical, the wishful, the 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 dreams. But the part that says in me the wishmaster, uh, based on this comment, the, in this um, conversation online, I do see that that's a, definitely a possible way to interpret that. And according to this source, that's even some of the things that Tuomas has said about the song. This concept of you are in charge of your wishes and your destiny. You've got to work for where you're trying to go. And um, I, I, I can agree with that. I do believe that uh, there is more at play sometimes. There's certain things out of our control. 
But I also think that just to sit back and and uh, leave all of it be to whatever there might be instead of taking action is also not the answer. I think a lot of times in life it's both and. There are things that are out of our control, um, but there are things that are within our control and we can decide where we want to go. We can set the trajectory and decide, right? Even it, what we're going to do with our life. Um, just sitting back, waiting for something to fall out of the sky, hoping for something or blaming everybody else that has a certain outcome or excusing their success, their their endeavors with that was just luck or that's just this or that versus acknowledging that a lot of it often for many is also hard work. And taking that responsibility for ourselves and saying, I'm going to do the hard work to work towards where I'm trying to be. Again, in addition to there being things that are out of our control, I do, be- I do believe there are also, I do believe it is also a possibility that there are greater things at play um, and things that are out of our control and the grand picture of things working together that we cannot see, we cannot possibly fathom with our finite minds. But because that's out of my control, there's only so much I can do about it. But what I can focus on is the things that I have been given and what I want to do with my life. The wishes. In me, the wish master. Being a disciple, being a warrior, being an apprentice and a master, right? Being the teacher and the student. And we all are learning all our lives. So again, once again, just Nightwish putting in these poetic profound, fairy tale like interesting lyrics. And cool to see Taria. That was nice. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Again, check out that song, Hollow, by Reap the Light. Subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment. What did you think? And if you want to support, buy a coffee. Say thanks. All the links are in the description below. I'm so grateful that you stopped by. This was Rosalie. Till next time. Ayo! Where do you think you're going? Wait a minute. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe and get yourself or a loved one some merch at my Rosalie Reacts store. Exclusive merch, t-shirts and shirts, all kinds of special products and a special limited edition collection. Various designs available for you. So get yourself some holiday merch, support my channel. Thank you so much. Ayo! Hey